as if they don't take enough already. Now the government wants your gold. A new amendment that was hidden in the health care bill states that all gold transactions over 600 bucks must be reported to the government. That means your name and where you live. Is this fair? We welcome uh, attorney Rebecca Rose Woodland and SEC registered investment advisor Christopher Markowski. Rebecca. Eric. Why do I have to fill out a seven page form if I simply want to buy or sell an ounce of gold? $600 is the minimum that you have to fill that form out now. So you, do you know how many transactions are going to be delayed and slowed down for this form? The government claims that they just want to keep track of this because they're losing tax revenue. But the reality is what they'll start keeping track of is all the people who are buying and selling or maybe stockpiling gold, and they'll be able to see where people are putting their wealth. That's probably what's behind this. And, and what in the heck is it doing in the health care bill? Well, that's what happens sometimes. That's how politicians do things. They throw things in. This was thrown in last minute to the bill, and then no one really has time yeah. to dispute it. Well, let me tell you, you know why they did that, Peter? Why did they do it? Well, I think, I think they're laying a foundation for capital controls that are coming in. I'll tell you this, you might not even know this, but I do. But it was let, also let, me, let me just do this. Let me just do they, they, they think they can raise $17 billion by doing that. That's crazy. They're using uh, other means to pay for their health care bill. Uh, it's, well, it's, exactly they're right. trying to lay this foundation for ultimate capital controls. People are going to be fleeing the U.S. dollar. Look, I have a broker-dealer. In addition to selling precious metals, I sell a lot of foreign stocks. Guess what the government just passed? When you file your tax return next year, you have to list with your 1040 every foreign stock that you own. Now, you don't have to identify the domestic stocks, but the foreign stocks, even if they're ADRs, even if they list on the New York Why Stock Exchange. You tell me. There's no reason Chris, for it. I think they're going to try to seize it. I, I don't think there should be any capital gains taxes in the first place. You could throw the whole thing out. But the reality is, is you're going to be having, if you spend $600 on legal pads over the course of the year, you're going to have to do a 1099 to Staples. Yes, that's, the, that's another new addition that they're trying Every to Every small business Chris, we had, we, had a, we had a coin dealer on a couple, maybe at the very beginning of Money Rocks sometime in June or early July, and he said, this is going to cost, I'm going to have to do 10 thousand seven page documents my business is going to uh, close up i may have to hire more people you spend more than 600 bucks on dry cleaning you're going to have to 1099 your dry cleaner my shoes eric <laughs> my shoes cost more than 600 dollars. i'm going to have to do a 1099 every time Chef, i buy a pair of Chef, shoes i think the real reason for all these 1099s is they want to take that that data and compare it to income taxes to see if people aren't paying their income taxes, not not the, the, the tax on the items. It's just more government paperwork because they know more and more people are going to go into the underground economy. As the economy gets gets worse, as taxes get higher, more people are going to try to go underground. And we're going to have black markets. Chris, let me ask you something. For a long time, though, people bought gold because, frankly, I could buy gold and no one didn't have to tell anyone about it. I could do what I want with it, right? Not anymore. No, not anymore. But, you know, it's the same thing with stocks, though, here. You have to report to the government every single time you purchase something, what the purchase price was what you sold it because you're going to have to pay capital gains taxes on that. Um, so you know, I, I don't see the problem. But the difference with that. is, Chris. The difference here is, is gold is, has always been a form of uh, store of wealth, not necessarily a speculative investment, which they're kind of lumping it all together right now. If I want to hold an ounce of gold, can't I hold an ounce of gold? I'm not going to go into a store with a stock certificate but, and say, hey, listen, I need to buy something. But you're not going to go into a store right now with an ounce of gold do that either, nor am I going to go into a store with an uh, American Express certificate and uh, you know, trade with that either. Beck, I'm, I'm annoyed by this. I'm, I, I'm, no, I feel I violated too, Eric, by this. And I, I agree with you. I think it's going to go further. I think it's a little more. We want to see who's stockpiling gold. We want to see what's happening, what people are doing with their money. They I certainly think know where my guns are, right? Well, I that's mean, for sure. But the it's government... Like the, the government yes, might need that gold one day, and they want uh, to know where it is so they uh, can come get see? it. Now, what if they pass a law and require you to turn it in? And you say, well, I don't have any gold. What do you mean you don't have any gold? What did you do with all this gold you bought? Right. There mm -hmm. you go. I mean, can, can they do that? Well, unfortunately, these law, this is a law on the books now. This is not something, can they do it? They did it. Someone has to challenge it, get it to be repealed. That's a very long process. I, 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 listen, I, I know what you're saying there and that they, you know, they throw that up there, and that's one of the reasons why that the, a lot of the gold dealers here try to push people into gold coins, which I just think is nonsensical. But the reality is I live in Florida. I used to live in New York City for a long time. We carry guns in Florida. Try that. 
See how that works out. You know, yeah. if people come into yeah, their house, the government's going to take it. It'll be a revolt down there. That's not going to happen. Well, uh, the Second Amendment, uh, the right to bear arms, it was originally written. The intent of the of the, of the uh, amendment uh, was to protect yourself not against each other, against the government. Yes, government. absolutely. A tyrant, right. tyrant government that want, may want other things as well as your gold. Well, absolutely. And they normally want your guns and your gold. But, you know, the government is getting more and more oppressive as the government continues to pursue policies that destroy the economy. They also just take away our liberties, and the government is able to use the chaos that they create as a justification to usurp power because we surrender our liberties because the government pr promises to protect us, but they're protecting us from them. Rebecca, you got to write, write up 1099 every time you buy a pair of shoes. Is that what I'm getting? <laughs> Isn't that I want to see how she can write off her shoes. My shoes, uh, my pocketbook. How is that book? possible? Bottom line, you guys, I'm going to wrap it up this way. This is not an administration that is business friend friendly by any means. Rebecca Rosewood, I'm going to say thank you to you. Thank you. All right, you think the gold ship has sailed without uh, you? Too pricey? Climb aboard the next big thing. It can make you millions. Next on Money Rocks. Welcome back, everyone. The time has come to tell you how you can make big bucks in the next bull market. Three things to consider investing in. One of them is my personal favorite. Oh, boy, I'm going to tip my hand right off the bat. Joining me now, CEO of Uranium Energy Corp., Mr. Amir Adnani. Uh, sir, stay with us for one minute. I, I just want to get back to you in a second because I want to save you for last because, sure. honestly, uran uranium is my secret pick. But I'm going to start with you, Peter. We, we asked everyone to, to pick their favorite picks, and here's Peter's. Uh, let me take a look. I'm opening it up. In Peter's envelope, it is silver. Go ahead, my friend. Yeah, Peter, why sure. is silver the next gold? Well, well, first of all, the gold bull market is not over yet, so don't start uh, burying it yet. We want to stay there. But the silver bull market is part of the gold bull market. But I think ultimately towards the end of that bull market, you're going to see a much more explosive move out of silver. For example, silver is still less than half of its peak price in nominal terms. In, in nominal terms. Right, in 1980. It's making new highs the way gold is, though. And so in fact, I think it's up more than gold is from, from low to high. Right, but... Believe me, at the end of this bull market, whenever it does end, you're going to see a more spectacular, climactic end to silver. Right. So if you really want to be in something that can go up a lot, even more than gold, silver. And we just spoke earlier, you could buy an ounce of silver for a lot less than $600, so you're not going to have to fill out one of those forms. No, no, the easier access. Uh, uh, Peter, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a thumbs down, I think. Okay, Christopher, I'm going to open your envelope right here, <laughs> right, my friend. And uh, when you sent this in, I, I thought it was brilliant. Brilliant. Lithium. Go ahead, sir. Why lithium? Uh, we, we do things a little bit different. We do baskets of commodities and whatnot. And I found it very, very interesting that um, the New York Times ran a piece back in June saying that Afghanistan has over a trillion dollars in lithium deposits within that country. Now, for the life of me, I don't know why we're in Afghanistan at this point in time, aside from the fact that maybe there is that type of mineral wealth there. Uh, you have iPods, you have cell what phones. What do we use lithium for? iPods, cell phones. In the form of? Yep, the batteries. Batteries, there you and go. And they're looking, the technology's not there yet, but eventually they want to get the technology to put into the electric cars. So how do you buy it? FMC. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I, trade, I know the stock. FMC is the big, one of the biggest uh, miners and producers uh, turning lithium. But how do into, I actually get the physical FMC lithium? A big, big, uh, well, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's kind of poisonous. You don't <laughs> so, want to be holding on yeah, to the so stuff. How do you get so it? Right, silver, right, you can hold go, your hand. Mr. Amir, are you there with us, sir? I'm going to open your envelope. Um, yeah, and it's fairly obvious, I guess. But you say uranium. I am on board with this. Go ahead, sir. Why is uranium the next gold bull market or bull market or the next way I'm going to make a billion dollars? Well, I mean, we got to say right up front that, uh, you know, it's apples and oranges. I mean, uh, gold uh, bugs are pushing uh, the price of the yellow metal to all-time highs on the concerns over, uh, you know, inflation, and it's a hedge, and it's become basically its own asset class. Uranium is driven by the energy market, and the fact is that where we are in the uranium market and nuclear power today is where we were with oil at the turn of the last century. At the turn of this century, uranium and nuclear power is very much emerging as a solution to our growing energy needs. It's a clean way of electricity generation. It's reliable and it's large scale. And as it plays this more important role in our energy mix, uh, we're going to have to mine more uranium. We're only mining enough uranium today to meet two thirds of current demand. And, we're, on and a worldwide existing basis, demand sir? is expected to double. On a worldwide basis? On a worldwide basis. Right. And, uh, you know, basically, let's go back to the price. Uh, price of uranium today is uh, at one-third of its all-time high, and its all-time high happened in 2007. Mm -hmm. On a nominal basis, its all-time high 
uh, could, on an inflation-adjusted basis happen uh, during the oil embargoes of the 70s. Uh, right. So now, sir, we're, we're not anywhere near the all-time high price of uranium. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I spe spent a lot of time with this. Um, we're producing about 18, maybe 20 percent of our elect uh, electricity through nuclear uh, methods, whereas the rest of the world, or there are places like France doing 80 percent, that has to increase in the U.S., and that will only create more demand for uranium, right? It's, that's exactly it. And it's not only is it going to expand uh, in the U.S., but places like China. China's currently constructing 22 nuclear reactors. Even oil-rich countries like United Arab Emirates has just now commissioned four new uh, nuclear reactors to be uh, constructed there. All of this is going to require more uranium. And the bottom line is that the cost for a pound of uranium to a nuclear reactor is very small, less than 4 or 5% of the cost to generate electricity. They're not price sensitive. Okay, so the couple of ways that uh, this is a user-friendly show, uh, ways to, to get involved in uranium are some of the, the major uranium refiners. Peter, I'm going to throw it out to you. Do me a favor, guys. Throw up a chart of, uh, let's go with CCJ. I think it's the largest That's uranium Cameco, producer yeah. in the world. Go ahead, Cameco. Can we, guys, can you do that? Go ahead, Peter. Uh, Uranium is a play. I love this. Yeah. Well, look, full disclosure, I own that stock in my personal account, and I own some other smaller uranium stocks. You know, we had a bit of a bubble in uranium stocks uh, back uh, four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. of them I sold and made some good profits. Others I still hold. I wish I had I sold them. But it is a great story. I was a big believer in the uranium story, and I still believe in it, particularly in, in, in Asia. And the best part about it is, yes, that no matter how high the price gold goes, it can double, it can triple. It's not going to affect. They have to buy it. Because are you, buy are you uranium buying this uranium deal? There's, there's great ways where you can get all of these things in your portfolio. There's good closed-end funds out there for a lot of uh, new investors. People are just getting involved where they can basically get their uh, beak wet in some of this stuff, and absolutely no doubt about it. M uh, Mr. Amir, uh, Adnani, I'm sorry. Uh, Uranium Energy Corp., your company right there, how are you doing? You're a publicly traded company, right? We're a publicly traded company. We're actually the only company in the world that's going to have uh, 2010 uh, production. Uh, we have a project coming online in the next uh, uh, 50 to 60 days down in South Texas. Our production is low cost and it's 100% unhedged. So our story is uh, getting a lot of traction out there right now. And uh, there will be uh, you know, many more uh, companies like ours emerging in this space over the next few years because right. there's only six companies in the world that produce that's, uranium. That's the only other thing. Six. And not many of them are in friendly lands, if I'm not mistaken. There's some areas of the world uh, less than solid geopolitics going on. We're going to have to say thank you very much, sir. Peter Schiff, thank you. Christopher uh, Markowski and Mr. Amir Ednani, thank you. Planning for gold is making a major, panning for gold is making a major comeback. Is this your way to strike it rich? More money rocks. I'll wear my glasses tomorrow.